All right, we're on lesson 2.4, graphing linear equations in standard form. So yes, there are other forms of linear equations other than y equals mx plus b. The standard form of a linear equation is ax plus by equals c. And a and b are not both allowed to be zero, otherwise you wouldn't have an x or a y. It'd be really hard to graph. It's really easy to identify the y and, in, y and x intercepts when the equation is written in standard form. So when you have an equation written in y equals mx plus b, you can find the slope and you can find the y-intercept really easily. That's the purpose of that form. Some people like to write equations in standard form, ax plus by equals c, if you're looking to identify the x and y-intercepts, because this one is best for that. So when you're trying to graph an equation that's given to you in standard form, which is basically our goal today, there's two different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you option one. I'm going to show you option two. So option one, when you were given an equation like this before, you rewrote it. You solved for y, and you identified the slope and the y-intercept and graphed it. So let's do that. I want to solve for y, so I would add a negative 4x to each side. That would be my step one. I'd be left with negative 3y equals 12 plus negative 4x. Then, of course, I would divide by negative 3. Make sure you divide each term by negative 3. And y would equal negative 4, and it is a negative 4 over a negative 3, so that would be plus 4 thirds x. And again, I want my slope to be a fraction because it's easier to graph. In graphing this, now that it's, the y is isolated, step 1, put negative 4 on your graph as a y-intercept, and then we're going to count the slope from here. So 4 thirds means up 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1, 2, 3, and we don't really have enough space to put another one on there, so I'm going to let you have a two-pointer here. Take your ruler. If you don't have a ruler, press pause now. Go grab one. Draw your line. All right, so voila, we've just completed the graph. Now, option two, you have more options. This is so exciting. So I'm giving you the same exact equation. Option two in graphing this would be to plot the x-intercept and the y-intercept on the graph and connect the two points because all you really need are two points to make a line. I just like three for, you know, because I'm me. So for these, yes, we can just use two. So remember that when y equals 0, that's the x-intercept, and when, and when x equals 0, that's the y-intercept. So basically, if you just plug 0 in for x and solve for y, you'd have the y-intercept. And if you plug 0 in for y and solve for x, you would have the x-intercept. So basically, here's what we would have. You'd have 4x minus 3y equals 12. I'm going to write this equation twice, and you'll see why in a minute. So you go ahead and write that equation twice. And in this one, I'm going to solve for the x-intercept. And this is where I like to use the cover-up method. <laughs> because if y is 0, isn't 3 times 0, 0? So that's just going to go away. So if I plug 0 in for this y, that's gone. I'm left with 4x equals 12 divide by 4, and we can see that my x-intercept is 3. On this side, if I want to solve for y, I would plug 0 in for x, and, or I can just cover up the x, the cover-up method. I'm left with 3y equals negative 12. So that cancels out this time because of the 0. I have 3y equals 12. I would divide each side by negative 3, and I get y equals negative 4. Now when you plot these on the graph, when x equals 3, there's a point right here, right? That's when x is 3. And when y is negative 4, that's right there. Connect the dots. And I'm hoping that you notice that these are the same exact graphs, right? Because you get the same exact answer here. So instead of rearranging it, you can basically, if it's in ax plus by equals c form, to find the x-intercept, cover up the y and solve for x. To find the y-intercept, cover up the x and solve for y. It's really that easy. So I'd like us to try doing the option two for these examples because you've done option one quite a bit in the other lesson. So here we go. Here's example a 
And notice we do need AX plus BY form in order for this to work. So in this equation, I have the X and the Y terms both on the same side of the equation. It's okay that the Y is in front of the X, and it's because of the commutative property once I change this to addition. The order that you add terms doesn't matter. So this is standard form. So if I want to know the y-intercept, I told you, cover up the x and solve what's left for y. So if I cover up the x, I'm left with 3y equals negative 6. We divide by 3. The y-intercept is negative 2. If I want to know the x-intercept, I'm going to cover up the y. Because when y is 0, that term cancels out anyhow. And I'm left with negative 2x equals negative 6. I divide by negative 2 and x equals 3. Now all that's left to do is to plot these. So y equals negative 2, x equals 3, draw your line, and you just graph your solutions. Let's try another one. Alright, so this one, yes, it's ax plus by equals c form. I have the x and y terms on the same side together. If I want to know the x-intercept, I'm going to cover up the y. In other words, I'm plugging 0 in for y, and it goes away. So my equation is negative 1 half x equals negative 2. To get x by itself, remember, if you multiply by reciprocals, you can get rid of a fractional coefficient. So basically, I can just multiply this by negative 2, or negative 2 over 1, however you want to look at it. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. This negative 2 times negative 1 half equal 1, 1x one is x, and negative 2 times negative 2, yep, that's 4. So my x-intercept is 4. I'll put that on here right now. 1, 2, 3, 4. To find the y-intercept, I'm going to cover up the x, or plug 0 in for x, and I'm left with 2y equals negative 2. All I need to do now is solve for y. I'll divide by 2, and y is negative 1. So I'll plot my negative 1. I'm going to grab my ruler, connect the lines, and there are all the solutions to that equation. All right, last one on this side. Yes, there's another page. Okay, it is in AX plus BY equals C form. The X and Y terms are on the same side, so I know I can use this method. This is nice. When I solve for the X and cover up the Y, there's not anything to do. X is just equal to negative 3. So let's put that on there. When I solve for the y and cover up the x, so when x is 0, I get 3y equals negative 3. We'll divide by 3 and y equals negative 1. Put it there. Grab your ruler. Draw your line. I know, standard form. It's a whole new world. I know. Crazy. All right. Next page. Application. Math story time. I tried to make it seem better by calling it story time because who doesn't love a nice story? So here's our story. It's about fruit. You have six dollars to spend on apples and bananas. Bananas cost 60 cents per pound and apples cost a dollar fifty per pound. Write an equation to find the pounds of apples and bananas you can buy using A for apples and B for bananas. That's our first part. And the second part is to find the intercepts. We also get to graph it and then interpret the intercepts, which we'll talk about what that means. So our first task is to write an equation to find the pounds of apples and bananas we can buy. A for apples, B for bananas. Um, you can kind of look at this as X and Y. There are two variables. They don't have to be X and Y. You can actually use whatever letters you want as long as one of them represents the independent, one of them represents dependent. So here we go. It says that you have six dollars total to spend, right? So the amount you spend on apples plus the amount you spend on bananas can be equal to six dollars. So I'm going to write equals six dollars. And I know I have to add up my apples plus my bananas. So I'm hoping you can kind of see this is looking like a standard form because I'm adding some of a variable plus another of a variable, a different one, and it's equaling six. So if bananas cost 60 cents a pound and apples cost $1.50 per pound, okay, how do we do this? Well, the cost of apples, it's going to be $1.50 times however many pounds I buy of apples. That would mean 1.5A. 
or 1.50 if you must, but you don't need that zero. And then we have 60 cents a pound for the bananas. Bananas are much cheaper. It's true. I like honey crisps, so my apples are even more than $1.50 a pound. I'm picky. So I'm going to put the 6 tenths, that represents 60 cents, and I'm going to put B there for bananas. This equation is going to tell me how many apple, how, how many pounds of apples and how many pounds of bananas I can buy. I'm hoping it makes sense. We will do a lot more practice with this in class. Now letter B asks you to find the intercepts. And it's great because this equation is already written for us in the form that allows us to find the intercepts quite easily. So if I want to find out A, I'm going to cover up the B. I'm going to plug 0 in for B. So to figure out A, I would take 1.5A and set that equal to 6. To find B, I'm going to cover up the A and see that I'm left with 6 tenths B equaling 6. Now to find these intercepts, so just step back. I just went up to my equation and I did the same thing I did on the front with the X's and Y's, but now they're A and B. Look at A and B as X and Y. If you want to call it X and Y, go ahead. Just remember that your X represents apples and your Y represents banana. All right, I'm going to scooch this up a little bit. Now we just need to solve these. If you divide this side by 1.5, you need to divide that side by 1.5. And 1.5 divides into 6 four times. Now we need to divide each of these by 6 tenths, and the pounds of bananas would be 10. So letter C asks you to graph the equation, right? You're given a graph. We don't have X and Y. We have apples and bananas, right? It doesn't really matter which one you put where, but I'm going to put apples down here. And I'm going to put bananas here. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Bananas. That's how I remember how to spell it. I think that's why she made up that song. So we all know how to spell bananas. This is already numbered for you. Aren't I nice? And I'm measuring these apples in pounds, right? And these bananas in pounds. You should list the units so I know we're not talking about whole apples. All right, so when I say A equals 4, that means on this axis right here that's the apples, I'm going to plot 4. And if we said that bananas is equal to 10, that means this is kind of like my B axis, and I'm going to plot a 10. You have two points here. We can now connect them, and we have our graph. Notice I didn't show you any of the other quadrants but one. That's because you can't purchase negative pounds of something. It's impossible. If you don't believe me, go to the grocery store and go up to the deli and say, can I have negative 3.4 pounds of turkey, please? And they will look at, like, look at you like you are cray-cray. Don't really do that. It's not possible. Okay. So... Apples 4, bananas 10. When I ask you to interpret the intercepts, interpret means you're going to tell me what it means. I mean, think about interpreters. When, they, when you have a meeting, people speak different languages. You have an interpreter, and they tell you what the other person means, right? So what do the intercepts mean? When I say that A equals 4 and B equals 10, what on earth does that mean? Well... This means that when my bananas are zero, I can buy four pounds of apples with six dollars. So if I don't buy any bananas at all, I can buy four pounds of apples. On the other hand, B, when B is 10, that means if I don't buy any apples, I can buy 10 pounds of bananas. That's a lot of bananas. You must have like a pet gorilla or something or a really big family that loves bananas. So anywho, what does it mean? This means, you can put it in your own words if you would like, or you can use mine, but this just means you can buy four pounds of apples if you don't buy any bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. On the other hand, it also means that you can buy 10 pounds of bananas if you don't buy any apples. I'm 
uncomfortable silence. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I can't write any faster. All right. So interpret just means, hey, tell me what your answers mean. And we're done for today. I'll see you tomorrow.